Thank you for joining me today. I'm Eric B2 with Two Homes. We are going to be talking about top 10 mistakes that people make during the home buying process. And please ask questions in the Q&A and we'll get to those at the end. And our special guest today is John Thompson, the co-founder of Intero. Um, and we'll basically go through the list and have a quick discussion on the points as we go, and then we'll wrap it up with whatever questions everyone has at the end. So please feel free to ask questions as we go. All right. So let's let's get started. So the first the first one is first mistake of the of a home uh, first mistake home buyers often make is not getting pre-approved. So before you even start looking at houses, you, you should talk to a lender to see how much you can afford. And, and that's kind of like one of the basic starting, starting points. Yeah, pretty obvious one, right? You know, um, you know, you only want, the more things you can eliminate from a seller's concern about you as a buyer, the, the bigger advantage you have on the negotiating table, right? If they're not worried uh, about your ability to close the escrow. So couldn't, couldn't say more. I, it's probably one of the most obvious ones that everyone gets and understands. But, you know, um, I'll, I will add one thing though, Eric, um, in, uh, in my years of overseeing this, it's not just, just pre-approved. It's pre-approved by the right lender a lender that either you know or have a relationship with or that the buyer knows and has a relationship with because that it's so critical that this is this is not the time to oh I saved 500 bucks on my loan fees because I went through rocket mortgage or whatever right you know there there are big consequences when you sign a purchase contract that if you don't fulfill them they're, you know, you're liable for things, right? So those online lenders and rocket mortgage and everything, they're fine if you're going to refinance later where there's no time constraints, no contract guidelines, but having a relationship with you, Eric, the agent, or, you know, the somebody that knows the buyer that is committed to not letting them down um, is, is, the, is the second thing uh, behind, you know, your pre-approval. Yeah, so that's that's a great point, uh, John. And we will we will have a lender on for for one of these webinars um, yeah. in the next month or two. That way we can go deep dive into the the lending process. So that's kind of just like a little teaser about that. Um, the second the second topic the second item that I'd like to go over is only looking at properties online and ruling them out definitively before seeing them in person or falling in love with the property online before definitively seeing it in person. So, so now with, with technology, we have virtual tours, we have drones, we have floor plans, we, we, have, we have Google Street View, satellite view. There, there's so many different ways to try to see houses, which is excellent. Um, but the I, I think the key thing that I'm trying to, or we're trying to, to stress here is that wa walking through a property yourself and, and seeing it, touching it, feeling it, smelling it is, is the ultimate, ultimate thing. And, and you can't, you can't make, it's strongly advised against making gigantic, which is probably the, the biggest financial decision you'll make in your life by, by only looking online. Talk to anybody that's done online dating. <laughs> it's the same, same thing, right? You know, you've got to see it live and in person. Um, otherwise, you know, there you 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 you'll, you might be surprised, right? I hate to say it, but I actually have seen in the past nobody from Intero, but you know, again, you know, agents that have, you know, um, photoshopped out, you know power poles that are in the, you know, in, in, in pictures and photoshopped in trees that aren't there. And so, yeah, I mean, I couldn't agree more that uh, it's wonderful to, for a, for a screening process, but nothing replaces live and in person. Yeah. And, 
And just to reiterate for our current times during COVID, there's, we have strict protocols that we have to follow, um, documentation that we have to sign and, and limiting the number of, of people that can go see a property. Um, we can go into that in more detail if people have, have further questions. We'll, we'll jump on to number three. Number three is not verifying the schools of the property. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, living in, in the Bay Area, the, the school districts do not follow the city boundaries, right? So ju just for example, I'll just take Saratoga, for example. There's like seven different high schools that you can go to in Saratoga. You can go to Saratoga High School. You can go to Monta Vista High School. You can go to Lindbrook High School. You can go to Westmont High School. You can go to Prospect High School. There's so many different districts and schools you could go to. And even if you don't necessarily have kids or plan to have kids, the, 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 the housing prices are strongly correlated and strongly affected by the schools. So if you potentially want to sell down the road or you're currently looking at a house and wondering why is it so much more expensive than the house, you know, a block away, that, that can be a factor. And what I would strongly suggest is the ultimate decider in the school district is directly the school district. So it doesn't matter what Google says, Zillow says, what I say, the, the school district where you would enroll your kid would be the ultimate decider in, in which, which, which house is in which school district. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that, Eric. You covered it. Uh, verify with the school district and whether you have kids or the seller has kids, doesn't matter. School districts affect home values, period. So, you know, pay attention to it, understand that, and understand that it's that doesn't mean it's not okay to buy a home with a with lower school scores, right? That's fine, but just know then that you probably shouldn't be paying the same price for those homes for a for a similar home in a better school district because school districts matter. They 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 do. Yeah. The, the, the next one, number four, which, which can be kind of challenging, especially where we live um, in the Bay Area, is expecting the sales price of the property to be the same as the listing price or asking price of the property. So the, the majority of homes in the Bay Area sell for, for more than, than the listing price. Um, in, some, in some extreme cases, significantly over. And it all just depends on the pricing strategy of, of the seller and the listing agent. So the, the real final sales price is ultimately decided by who? By the buyers, right? So if, 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 they're, if they're willing and able to purchase a property for a specific price, that's the market price, that's the sales price. And, and sometimes it can be misleading when you see a property that's listed say for 999,000 um, when everything else in the neighborhood is, is worth 1.5, then most likely it won't sell for $1 million. And, and it's a teaser price. It's like, oh my goodness, this is, let's, let's jump on this. I want to buy this right now. Yeah. I mean, all good points there, right? I mean, I've always encouraged buyers. A lot of times buyers get freaked out or resistant if they find out there's multiple offers on a home, right, Eric? I'm sure yeah. you've, you've heard that. And and, I, and when I hear, when a buyer or one of my family members calls me and they're buying a home anywhere in the country, I go right on. Awesome. That means you've picked a good property because other people want it. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with multiple offers that, I mean, to me that says, yay, right? You know, you want something that's valuable that others see value in. Sometimes, not always, right? Sometimes like, hmm, if I'm the only offer on the home, you know, that, that's the time maybe to stop and pause for a second, right? And, you know, what am I missing that other buyers aren't seeing? And the other thing is, you know, I know in my experiences, I've, I've never regretted paying more for something that I've really wanted and liked and appreciated and valued, right? You know, oh, I got a great deal on this home, but I can't stand it. It's in the neighborhood I didn't want. It's in the commute I didn't want. It's the school district I didn't want, but I got a great value on it. I think you're misguided, you know, in, in that thought process 
that 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 doesn't necessarily mean you know a good value for you as a buyer just because the price was the right number. So you got to look at all these different things when you're when you're buying a home. And and like I said, you know, if you're gonna win the offer, if there are multiple offers, just you got to understand you will be the highest bidder. That's okay, you know. Um, otherwise, if you're not, you won't get the home. So I mean, again, it's funny, right, Eric? I mean, some yeah. buyers freaked out. They're like, "Oh, I paid X." I'm like, "Yeah," and you got the home. If you wouldn't have, you you wouldn't be having the opportunity to own it. There, there, there's a you know, there's a price. Uh, there's an insurance policy that you pay to get a good property when there's multiple offers and other people wanting to buy it. So. I look at that always as a good thing when others are, are, are competing to buy the same thing I'm trying to buy. Exactly. Um, and that, the, next, the next one, number five, is a common mistake is not having an agent represent you as the buyer when you purchase a new construction property. Um, so it, it, it's very important to know that the the representatives that you're meeting at, at that new construction project represent the seller. They're, they're full-time employees of, of, of the builder, right? And so they're not necessarily looking out for, for your best interest. Um, a, a, a quick story I'll say is that um, I had a client that was in contract on a property in San Jose in Evergreen. And we, we did a, this will, this will get on towards the, the later steps, but we did an additional inspection, home inspection. And there was all kinds of, significant problems with the property, right? And it's a brand new house, new construction. So you think when you're buying a new house, everything is new, everything works, but that's not always necessarily the case. And it's really important um, to, to have representation for you as the buyer to protect your interests, right? In, the, in this very, very important decision that you're making. I totally agree. I, I, I would just add, understand there's a difference between you know, having a permit and having a city inspector sign off on something and the quality of it, right? I could probably do a lot of work around my house and do it to code, but it wouldn't be very good quality, right? Um, and those are two different things, right? And as long as it passes code, doesn't mean it's quality workmanship and done in a fine manner. And so, you know, I, you know, don't, don't, don't get in your head that, ah, oh, it's new construction and it's a builder and this It's like, yeah, uh, a lot of times they look to cut corners to add, you know, you know, profits to the project as well. And, and having a good agent, you know, that understands properties that understands good from bad in in workmanship and has seen lots of homes. That's all they do every day is see homes and, and, and look at repairs and projects. It's invaluable. Yeah. And so going on to the next one, number seven, um, number six, sorry, common mistakes is not carefully reviewing all the disclosures and inspections, right? So we, we briefly mentioned this in the, in the, in the previous one, but the, the disclosure process for real estate is, is quite onerous um, on the seller because we live in an extremely litigious state, right? People are getting sued all the time. And we're trying to, as, as real estate agents for both buyers and sellers, we're trying to protect everyone. And, and the way we do that is to disclose, is to say and tell everything we know about the property. And taking the time as a buyer to go through the entire disclosure package with, with your agent is essential because there's so many things in there that can be potential red flags. Yeah, I, I agree, Eric. And uh, I just add when a seller or a listing agent, you know, I look at all their disclosures that they, they provide us and they check no, 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 to everything that nothing's wrong with the home. To me, it's a red flag because, you know, again, as a buyer of a lot of properties, you got to understand no home is perfect. I mean, there's going to have some flaws here and there and you know they, that doesn't mean that it, it's not a valuable purchase but when when somebody says no 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 my house is perfect and there's nothing wrong with it they either didn't read the questions very well 
you know, or they're not taking disclosure very seriously, you know, and, and then the, my only other thing to add there is really focus as a buyer on the big structural items. Don't worry about, you know, pay attention to everything, but, you know, really pay attention to the foundation, like soils, you know, the leveling of a home, the roof, roof. <laughs> the roof, right? You know, yeah. maybe the electrical panel, right? You know, don't worry if an outlet is inoperable, you know, you know, little things, you've got a busted vent, you know, there's a squeaky, I mean, a lot of times buyers worry about the silliest of things that you can change, really focus on the, un, you know, the big ticket items, right? That, that, because everything else is pretty fixable. You know, the big ticket items that you can't change, like, you know, where does the house sit? Is there a gas station in your backyard? You're never going to change that, right? You know, it, you know, is, you know, look at the picture, not don't, don't look at the, all, all the small things. Cause every home, as you go through it, there's going to be a laundry items of, of, of things that aren't right. Oh, the, the garage door opener was plugged in incorrectly to, you know, an outlet with an extension cord versus it being, okay, yes, it's better to be, but I'm not worried about that. We can fix that pretty easily by adding a plug right near where the, uh, the power box is for, you know, for the door. But if, you know, you drop a marble on the living room floor and it takes <laughs> one direction, you know, that's something you got to pay attention to. Yeah, so we'll go on to number seven, which you kind of briefly mentioned about the gas station is not researching the neighborhood um, in depth, right? So what what is your commute going to be to work? Um, what a big one is what future construction projects are going to be happening nearby you, right? So like if you see this nice big open space that's not a park that is potentially buildable, basically in the Bay Area, at some point, some developers are going to come by and put townhouses and condos on there and it's going to be a multi-year project and you're going to have construction noise traffic and, and all kinds of headache living there and so researching the the neighborhood in the area is is extremely important to see the overall big picture right of of, of the neighborhood that you're going to be potentially living in for for quite some time yeah i mean i again i couldn't agree more right it's it, you know you know Oh, I loved this home because it, my kids could walk to the school, right? But then they don't realize, well, how close to the school do you want to be, right? You know, yeah. uh, you just have to acknowledge and know that, you know, okay, at eight o'clock and three o'clock, there's going to be a lot of traffic around the house if it's really close to the school or, or if you're buying, you know, um, you know, you know, near a high school, right? Again, nice advantages to have it near, but, you know, is, are the weekend football and baseball games, you know, going to bother you, right? You know, I mean, they don't happen a lot, but, you know, you got to go at night, go at various points of the day, you know, check the commute. I mean, check all these things that, uh, you know, as if you were living there and, and think about, you know, all of this, all of the things, the surrounding areas um, and, and what they will be like at different times of the day. Yeah. That's, and then another great example on that is like in the weekend as well. So a yeah. good example is like if you are, have a house near Rancho San Antonio, right, in Los Altos, if you live near Mission Peak in Fremont, right, the, the streets get crowded. It looks like it's Disneyland parking lot or 49ers Levi Stadium parking lot when you try to go there on the weekends. Um, we'll hop right on to number eight is a common mistake home buyers make is ignoring the impact of HOAs, right? So HOAs have both lots of positives and lots of negatives. So we'll go over a positive first is that they, they mostly take care of, they, in most cases, they take care of the exterior of the property for you. So the landscaping, the watering of the plants, right? Keeping the place, the outside looking very neat and clean. Um, some of the some of the challenges of HOAs are are the HOA fees, right? There you got to pay them every year or every month, and there's a lot of rules and regulations with the HOA in terms of what you're allowed to do, both outside and inside your property. And so, understanding 
uh, and, and, and making sure you have your realtor explain the HOA to you is very important. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I, there's pros and cons, like you said, right? I mean, it's the, you know, double check the finances of them, right? I yeah, mean, the reserve. Part, part of your dues goes towards replacing the roofs. Now, that's not a bad thing, right? They collect, you know, 40 bucks a month from you forever, right? You know, to replace all the roofs sometimes, right? And depending on if the roofs are covered. And that's nice. Then when your roof has to be replaced, you don't all of a sudden have a, you know, $15,000 roofing bill because you've been saving for it in the HOA, you know, all these times, but you got to make sure the HOA is budgeting correctly and saving for that correctly, et cetera. Um, so there's pros and cons to that. And, and the uh, one other thing I, I, I like to add on um, reviewing HOAs is read the minutes of the HOA meeting. Meeting, yes. Uh, there's probably almost, aside from the financials, there's nothing more important to reading the minutes because that's when everyone's speaking openly about the, I, the dogs are crazy in here or this is a problem or this, you know, the, and, and those minutes you know, tell a lot of things about what's going on in association. So, you know, just read them and pay attention to them. If there's something there that alarms you, you got to investigate. Yeah, so we got two more left. Number nine, um, we kind of briefly mentioned already, um, is a common mistake that, that home buyers make is trying to time the market or waiting for a great deal on the property. So, so timing, timing is, is, timing the market is, is extremely difficult, right? So questions I, I would ask people about timing the market is, did you buy stocks during the beginning of COVID, right? That's the best deal you could have had, right? In the last, you know, couple of years. Did you buy property during that one month in February, right? Because things slowed down a little bit, right? Both in the stock market and in the real estate market, right? That was an amazing deal for both. Um, so I think it's, it's really important to have a longer term view on your property, especially if you are planning on living there for, for the long term. If you, if you plan on selling it in, in six months, then I think it's very important to time the market, right? But if you plan on living there for a year, five years, in, in many cases, much longer than that, then the, the general trend, which we can't guarantee will continue, but the general trend for Bay Area real estate is that it's gone up in value over the long run, right? And for the short run, a lot of things happen. There can be fluctuations, but I think it's much more stable than the stock market, right? Anybody can look at the data and see the fluctuation in our Bay Area real estate market versus versus the stock market. And you can see that the, the general trend is, is positive and, and much more stable. Yeah, you, you said that correctly, especially in the Bay Area. This, yeah. this answer is focused specifically in, in the Bay Area. I, I can't speak for the Midwest or the South or, you know, the North, anywhere else, but yeah, an old friend of mine, uh, I think he probably owns about 18 properties now, all here in and around the Bay Area. This was 25 years ago, told me, JT, you know, buy real estate and wait. Don't wait to buy real estate. And, you know, I'm like, that's a corny saying. And, you know, sometimes those corny sayings are, are, are magical and, you know, yes, I, I've regretted every home I've ever sold. Even if I've sold a home to buy another one, I'm like, ah, I bet you there was a way I could have kept that one and still bought the next one, right? Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, over time, as long as you're never put in a position where you're forced to sell, it's proven it's, uh, the you know, you know, the strongest place to put your money. It's better than your mattress, and in my opinion, yes, it's more, more stable and, and more, has a lot more structure than the stock market. Even though the stock market's proven to be a great place as well, I, I still say real estate as, has proven over, over the long haul to be a, a stronger place. Yeah, and so um, feel free to ask questions, everyone in, in the Q&A. We have one more left. Um, it, it's not, Common mistake is not working with an expert realtor. That's common mistake. You, did you say not working with Eric Chu? Did I, did I hear you? 
<laughs> That's what I think I heard you say, but you know, that is never been a more true statement. Working with an expert like you, Eric, that, that, that knows and understands these 10 things that we talked about, that cares about the cup client, you know, that cares more about them than the transaction, right? You know, and I know that's who you are and, and that's why you're, you know, so successful in this business and industry. All right, thank you so much, JT, for those kind words. Let's, let's jump in to the Q&A. Um, for, first one I'll, I'll go over um, from anonymous attendee is what areas of the inspections should buyers play, pay close attention to? Um, JT briefly went over this, um, but I'll, I'll reiterate um, in the inspections, the, the most generally, not always, but generally the most expensive things to repair on a house are, are the foundation and the roof, right? So those are the two areas where I would spend extra focus on. I would, I would read everything very carefully and, and advise you on that, but the foundation and the roof. And, and on top of that, I would say um, foundations can be repaired, right? Um, just because there is a you know, six foot crack in the foundation doesn't mean that the house is gonna fall down tomorrow or even in five years. Um, it's important to have a network or, or, or referrals of quality foundation repair companies, which that's their only business is to repair foundations and, and get it fixed for you. So I've had clients with 100 plus year old houses in, in San Jose that have had, have had foundation work and everything is fine. But the inspection report um, makes it sound like the house is, is you know, unstable and it's right about to fall down. Yeah, we yeah we talked about this and I and I couldn't agree more. Just don't worry about the cosmetics. You know the co You know again, it all depends on you know the price and the value that you're paying for a house. But you know the cosmetics are are simple fixes or uh, you know they can be changed out. You know the the major structural components of a property are the only things I ever I I go, I go directly to those whenever I buy a property. I look at it exactly like you said. Look, let me look at the roof. Let me look at, you know, the foundation and the soils, you know, is everything level, you know, if there's a chimney, well, you know, is the chimney, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, stable, or is there, are there are things with that that tell me there's settling problems because that's what chimneys are good for telling you if there's weird settling going on. Right. Uh, that, that, that worries me even more than the chimney being cracked. Cause I can replace the chimney, but if there's weird soil settlement, then that, that causes future pro even after I fix the cosmetics, if the, if the house moves around, then it messes up my cosmetics. Right. So the, the, really the bones of the house, you know, the, is, is water away from the house exactly. away from the house is that, you know, are the footings and the foundation solid? And if they're not, again, I agree with you. I, I still have bought homes with bad foundations. I just, you know, there's got to be a price adjustment for it, you know, and then yeah. and that's a give and take. Yeah. And then the, the other thing you briefly mentioned that too, is, is, is the drainage. So having yeah. water, the gutter drainage, okay. right? And the landscaping drainage of the property is so key to protecting your foundation, right? So when, when it rains, um, pay attention to where the water is going, right? So you have water pooling towards the edge of your property or your house, it, it, it can cause potential future problems, right? So you want to you wanna have drainage away, away from the property, from the roof, and just even from your, your yard, right? You want to make sure that it drains away, away to, to protect your foundation. Um, and, and if you already own a home, yeah, uh, just cleaning the gutters every year, right? I mean, yeah. that's how simple as that sounds, it's yeah. that they are probably one of the biggest causes of major repairs for dry rot in your roof and in your eaves, you know, yeah. and, you know, and water being where it shouldn't be. So, you know, the, the simple function of, of getting your gutters cleaned out every year, even if you don't have trees around, you know, what, what's interesting is, well, I don't have that many trees. There's still a lot of silt and soot and ash and <laughs> crud that lands on our roofs that fly around and still end up in your gutter that clogs them. So don't don't just assume that leaves are the only thing 
I don't have very many leaves around my house. There's still a lot of other things that float through the air that end up in your gutter when you when they hit your big roof because it's a big target and then it flows into the gutter and, and clogs things. Yeah, um, great answer. And the next question from anonymous attendee is, what are the steps required to make an offer on, on a house? That's an excellent question. Um, the first step would be to talk to a realtor, right? And then um, you can go over the game plan on, on what it takes. Um, just briefly would be kind of the steps that we briefly talked about today, right? Of what not to do. If you do the, what we suggest, it, it, that's kind of like the starting process. So getting pre-approved, um, first meeting with the realtor, and then, and then seeing property and going through the disclosures. And then, and then they can walk you through the, the process after that point in terms of putting together a package. Um, it's good. Yep. Uh, I don't have much to add to that, Eric. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, the, that's the beginning step is, uh, is what you just said. Yeah. So the next question comes from, from Kathy. Is working with a listing agent the best way to get a house? Um, I, I would say it, it, it depends. So a, a good example of that would be what we discussed on the new construction, right? So if you're working with the, the builder, then the builder, builder representatives, or in case the listing agent and, and working, their most likely primary motivation and interest is on the seller, right? Versus your interest as a buyer. So oftentimes there, there can be challenges um, with that in terms of you getting the best possible service. Totally agree. I just say be cautious on that. It, it, it doesn't always mean that it's a bad way to go, but I, it, I'll say what Eric says, it depends on who the realtor is, right? You know, and, and who's, who's managing that, right? There, there, there are ways that that can be done and done correctly where an agent represents both parties, you know, and does it well at the same time for a purchase, right? I know Eric, you're, you're one that I would trust in doing that, but unfortunately, there's a lot of realtors out there that I know are might have ulterior motives, right? Or lean towards a favorability for somebody. And you know, if that somebody is not you, that's uh, that's a bad mix when you're when you're talking about buying a home. So, you know, bottom line is whoever is representing you, know that person. Yeah, that's nope. the best, best advice. Yeah. You know them, feel comfortable with them, they're professional, they have integrity, you know, they have a reputation, you know, that they care about and that they care about you more than they care about the transaction. Yeah. Um, ne next question comes from, from Ty, which, which is, what are things to look for um, with, with rental investments? What generally works better? Single family, condos, townhouses, or multifamily, for example, duplexes. Ty, that's a that's a great question, and unfortunately, the answer is it depends, right? So, um, for for the Bay Area, um, over the long over the long run, single family homes have appreciated the most of, of those of those classes that we that we discussed. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean it would be the right investment for you, right? For example, single families are probably the most per square foot of those three, right? Single family, condo, townhouse versus, versus multi-unit. Potential big multi-units potentially could cost significantly more depending on the number of units. Um, it depends on what your uh, investment goals are, right? Do you want cash flow? Do you want potential appreciation? Do you want to manage the property? So like doing the landscaping, right? Fixing the fences. So there's a lot of different factors that you have to take into consideration in, in making your investment. That last statement was the best, Eric. And you know, you got to review it with somebody like Eric and understand what everyone's individual goals are in investment real estate because it's no different than stocks, right? There are stocks that are growth stocks. They don't pay any dividends, but they they go up in price. And then there's others that maybe they don't go up in price very much, but they pay dividends, right? You know, and, and so real estate investments are, are very similar. And, 
you know, you have to assess, you know, what is, what's important for your, your financial strategy um, and, and, and time in life, right? As you get older in life, you know, probably you're not looking at growth as much as you are income. When you're younger, you can go, yeah, I can buy this and hold on to it for 20 years and I don't need the cat, I don't need the income from it. Right. And, and the, then, then those types of investments might be better investments to look at as you're in your peak earning years in your job or career. You don't need it from from the property as much. And you can see, you know, great equity growth. And then you switch it into things that are more, you know, um, monthly dividend, you know, cash flow growth towards, you know, the end of your investment cycles in life. So it, it, you just got to sit down with Eric and let somebody smart like Eric analyze it for you. Yeah. And then a potential future webinar as well is, is different tax strategies that you can play on, on investment properties, right? So like 1031 exchanges, um, for example, is, is, one, is one strategy. Um, I'd like to thank, thank you for attending and thank you, JT, for participating um, in our webinar today. Um, if anyone has any further questions, feel free to, to reach out or put a comment down below in, on Facebook and I'll try my best to answer them. And then otherwise, until next time, everyone have a nice day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for inviting me, Eric. Thank you, JT.